Should, I, should we get started? Yeah, yeah. He, he said he will have a uh, holiday today, some Canadian holiday. So he's not joining. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so uh, Benji, I, I saw you just sent me your uh, spec draft. Maybe, do you want to uh, maybe walk us through it a little bit? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Apologize again. Um, I still have a sore throat since last week. Um, so apologies for that. Um, I will share my screen. Uh, <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> All right. Hopefully you can see something titled absolutely terrible, not even quite a first draft, quite a first draft. Yeah, um, we can see it. Okay, so <clears throat> after last week, I did try and uh, make some changes uh, and then I got sicker and completely lost track of what it was that I was doing uh, <laughs> and then gave up halfway through the week and just went to bed. Um, fortunately, <laughs> Rob reminded me uh, a couple of hours ago that I did say I would do this. So I've uh, I tried to scrape something together based on whatever ramblings it was that I'd done last week. Um, and then on that, I've then evolved quite a bit very, very recently. So some of this has been written in the last sort of 10 minutes. Uh, FYI, <clears throat> to explain the state of it. Um, so the concept is this. Um, I've introduced the concept of phases um, and I will stress that this is not like proper spec edits. So um, it does things like it mutates things, which we definitely don't want in the spec because that would break like error handling and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, so just try and imagine that we've rewritten the spec in such a way that that's not necessary. Um, so it introduces the concept of phases. And then as you go through and you execute your selection sets, when you hit a defer, you effectively create a new phase and you add the selections to that phase. Now, when you execute a selection set, you group all of the selections by their field name. Um, and then normally we just look at the first selection in each of those groups um, because they're all in normal GraphQL that exists today, they're all equivalent. Right, they've already got all the same directives, they've got the same arguments, all that thing. The only thing that's different for each of them is potentially like their selection sets, stuff like that. Um, that is a little bit different now with stream and defer. So what I've done is I've effectively attached the phase information to the selections. Um, so we know effectively which phase each of those selections comes through. And then when it comes down to actually executing uh, the selection set, we can then look at the, um, let me turn on the ignoring of white space changes if I can find out how to do that. Uh, yeah, here we go. Um, so <clears throat> uh, if, none of the fields, the selections uh, for the current uh, field name are in the current phase, then we basically skip over it and we note that we're gonna be executing it later and we effectively store this object value for later. So we don't have to execute its parent, uh, parent field again or anything like that. Um, this is actually where it should be in queued, but like I haven't written the correct text for that. Otherwise, we do the normal stuff where we normally we normally execute it, but we pass in the the phase information. Um, then there's a bit of weirdness about like once you, if you decide that you're executing this field in the current phase, then we effectively pull all of those different types of selections, some of which are for different phase, we pull them effectively into this phase. The idea being that then when we come to look at the remainder later, um, 
we can see that they're not in our current phase anymore because they've already been dealt with or something like that. Um, I added a little like should defer helper to help the system decide whether, you know, if it wants to not defer for performance reasons, but that's uh, neither here nor there really. That's kind of a separate concern. Um, so then we, when we start actually executing a query, we build a new phase, like which is the root phase effectively. Everything starts in the root phase. We then execute the selection set using that root phase. If no other phases are created, then we just do what we always used to do and we return an unordered map containing the data and errors. Otherwise, if the current phase, the root phase, has children, then we'll need to do streaming. So we create the stream, we set a list of pendings, which will be all of the, the children from the current phase, um, send that out onto the um, onto the stream along with the, the data and errors. Mm -hmm. um, and then we go about and we execute the phases and we do that in parallel, all the, the, the siblings, we execute those in parallel. And for those, it's actually quite similar um, to what we normally do. So it, the, the interesting thing here is effectively the parent field has already been executed. And what I'm proposing with this is that we don't, um, what's a good scratch pad website? Hang on, let me turn off my sharing for a sec. Uh, I'm not even signed into GitHub. That's not helpful. Um, so what I was trying to say is, I suppose I can't even leave comments here. What I was trying to say is um, that previously we were talking, or I was talking about the uh it being sort of equivalent to compiling the defers into separate queries but i think what we can actually do instead is just send through like the resulting selections and there can be multiple of them that come out of the same defer as separate payloads and then once you've done that then you would add the fact that it's completed to uh the stream um, so I guess if I open the Zoom chat, I can type something in there. Again, I only wrote out half of this like <laughs> very, very recently, so I don't have enough examples or anything yet. No, I'll write up an example later. I'm not going to be able to write one on the fly. The... The key um, concept, I think, is these phases um, allow us to track on the selections themselves where the selections come from so that we can exclude uh, selections that have already been dealt with in future. That's really the, the key. Kind of state, right? Like uh, execution state that we can uh, track across uh, actually the parallel threads that we have. Or parallel executions that we have yes so uh yeah we we effectively cache the object value the path um so that we know that we can execute those later without having to re-execute the the dependent fields and an, an important thing about what this does is it doesn't do the maximal de deduplication that we've been talking about it just does like best effort deduplication so like one layer effectively Um, so, so th this would not be executing the, the field more than once if it's in both the initial payload and inside of a defer? Yes, correct. And the same would be true for descendants as well. So for any, like, any selection set anywhere, 
um, it won't be evaluated in that selection set and also inside of a deferred like child or grandchild selection set inside of it. How would how would that happen if it's something not let's say it's not at the like the same level of where the defer is, but there, it's some object a few a few layers down that's in both of a defer and outside of a defer. So effectively, what we do is the selection, which is like the the instance of a field, but not you can have multiple instances of the same field, multiple selections right. of the same field, right? Um, so each of those effectively knows which um, defer it belongs to and then, or which um, phase, sorry, that it belongs to. Um, and then we can use that information when we collapse those down, um, which I think is around here. So it's in, inside of the execute selection set. We look at the group field sets for the given response key. So we pull those fields out, those individual selections. Um, and then based on that, we can then look, um, we can look at those to see whether all of those selections are not in the current phase or whether they are or whatever. The logic here might not be perfect, but effectively we can use the knowledge of which phase each of those fields is in to know whether or not it needs to be executed or not, whether it's already been executed. Yeah, I think I need to just spend some more time with it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the title suggested. <laughs> but I, yeah, the, the key thing effectively is that we're, we'd be storing more information about the selections. So at the moment, the selection knows like what the, I mean, it knows the field name and the selection set and the args, right? That's effectively what a selection or a field selection is. It's the field name, the parent type, the selection set and the args that it would be passed through. And I think directives as well. Um, and we'd be adding to that also. And which phase does it belong to? Um, is is it is the idea that we are just kind of doing traversal through the whole tree, but like grabbing the values and sending them to the right payloads? Is that what's happening? No, 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 no. We don't. Okay. We don't. We don't do any additional traversals than what we would do with um, the current GraphQL, other than obviously. <clears throat> handling then the deferred execution of anything that was deferred. Um, so the the current, but the current phase, a, a phase is essentially an execution of something. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the children are things that I spawned off, or other things that. I, I have been spawned off. Uh, the things that will be. So um, okay. I know we've talked about this as well um, in terms of like, can we start executing the deferred things before the main selection set is complete? And this proposal doesn't state that that is what happens. That doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means observably, it would need to be as if it hadn't been the case. Um, so yeah, we, we effectively run the, the original selection set, everything in the first phase first, and then we look at that phase as children and we go through and execute all the selections inside of that and then so on and so forth down until there are no more children, grandchildren, etc. The children are effectively added here, by the way. So when, when we see a defer, 
we create a new phase object and set it as a child of the current phase. This also is a difference in behavior from what we've currently proposed because we've we've currently proposed that doing like dot 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 defer with a selection set of dot 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 defer would would merge together this doesn't currently do that we can make it do that but it currently doesn't Jakob said in chat um, that he sees this as similar to his approach, except that we deformalize defer depth as phase, and it's better because we're not relying on memoization, but instead using proper types. Yeah, I mean, you also have the ability to, um, to uh, complete the uh, phase like as it comes and then mark it uh, 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 as completed. I think that's also, you know, another good feature. Basically, I, I think it's great. I mean, I, it, it's going to require uh, uh, more, you know, in, you know, finessing and implementing. And the question, I guess, is uh, benefits, uh, cost versus benefits, I guess, time and development. But I think it's ultimately uh, better. I don't know. And I should stress as well, this like hasn't looked at stream. I haven't factored this into um, mutations or subscriptions, though it would work basically the same. I just haven't done the, the edits there. So this is like incredibly raw. Um, I need to turn this into more of an actual first draft, uh, but I've uh, <laughs> been a little under the weather, so I haven't had much time. <laughs> no, I, I'm totally fine with it being as rough as possible just to get the idea across and I can spend time on incorporating it into like the spec edits and writing the, the code and everything. Um, but, but I think just like some examples would help me just understand exactly the, the intention, I guess. Um, yeah, me too. I agree. I'll, I'll write some of those. But uh, just so the deduplication that that we are doing here, um, so how 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 does that deduplicate? Make sure that we don't. Is it uh, so you want to you want to essentially store each of the selections that you have executed on the face or? What I want to do and what I've actually done are two slightly different things. Um, but to to answer your question, effectively, the deduplication happens during the, the execute selection set. Um, so if we're not executing it now, then we add it as a thing to be executed later. Otherwise, we execute it now and we send it. So it will only be one of those two things for each field. Like it either gets executed or it doesn't. Now that won't be true once there are once you effectively fork execution through a defer um then it might be that you know it gets evaluated in in two different great grandchildren um but for for siblings certainly for parent and child um it will be deduplicated parent and child phases to be clear mm -hmm. Sibling phases won't deduplicate. Um, I want I want to pull up the example that we talked about last week. Um, yeah. So so just to talk through like. When we say like static deduplication, um, whereas ori I, originally we wanted to like model the same behavior where if you were to rewrite a query or th you the uh, execution would act in the same way. 
Um, so, so my, my assumption was that this would mean that if you're looking at a, this query, um, it would just get rewritten to remove this, this defer entirely. And you're only ever going to get, uh, one payload from that. Yes. That's still the case with my proposal. What and it's, it will be still the case. It's not currently because effectively, a a new phase gets created. Um, but that phase ends up having nothing in it. Um, and there isn't currently a, a step in which I clear that away. Um, but yeah, ultimately it should, hopefully. Okay. And now the second example is this one. There's no overlap. So this should return. Uh, this should always have a defer with, this should always yield two payloads. Um, right. Yes, that will still be the case, but, um, the difference from what we've currently proposed is that that second payload would have the name field in it directly rather than having the nested object and then the name in it. Because you can check that this already was fulfilled by a previous phase. Because effectively the defer gets pushed inside of the nested object um but not really like you wouldn't represent it like that in syntax um but the the nested object field is pulled out into the parent and it's only the selection for name that is still actually deferred so the uh, the path of that payload would not be point to the same path of where the defer is correct yes that's, that's absolutely a, that's a, the significant change that we're making i guess yes yes Huh. Is that um is that desirable or just like something something that it, it is the current state? I don't think it's uh necessarily desirable or undesirable. I, I don't think it particularly matters. I think the main things that we need to get out of like defer is to know that when a when a deferred thing is completed it is completed and we've got that with the um with the pendings and the the completed this id or whatever um so so long as the information gets there i don't particularly mind if it comes over multiple payloads or anything like that split up from what um what was there before this is obviously different trade-offs to what we've discussed for some of the other solutions. This is an alternative solution. Um, so it may be that different people feel different ways there. Uh, well, I mean, it's very similar, I guess, to, to what Ivan was suggesting, right? Um, previously, and, and I think we we talked about an implementation being uh, like sort of a, a test case and uh, I think one of the people that might have an issue with what I'm proposing is Matt Mahoney. Um, so I mentioned that because he's not here. Um, he was saying before that he would rather that the client only receives payloads when they are like actionable or something like that. So they were needed to be like a complete state. So um, in what I'm proposing, you might end up getting different payloads for different layers and then a notification that a particular defer is now complete. Um, and I think Matt would rather that we didn't receive that. Um, but one of the advantages of the approach that I'm proposing is we don't have to do quite so much um, nested object merging um, because we tell you what we tell you deeper what the path is. We don't have to repeat like parent objects multiple times, for example. Um, so it's, it's, you know, trade-offs. In in your case, uh, the the thing that I that I was struggling with um, when I was implementing 
was uh, if this nested object returns null, there there has there wouldn't be any way to like know by going deep down inside that they actually do have the same or different uh, children fields and knowing whether that a static algorithm would have deduplicated it or not. But I guess that's not the case here because you wouldn't you wouldn't be sending this object a second time ever. So am I yeah, we'd, that? we'd never even get as far as looking at the name field because it effectively follows the same algorithm that GraphQL has currently with some very slight modifications. So because the nested object field would be null, we'd never execute its sub selections. So they would never be added to the queue to be executed later. Part of being added to the queue, that name field there, if that were to be added to the queue, it would be added along with the object value of the nested object field. So at that point, we'd need to know the object value. And if we find out it's null, we definitely wouldn't, we just wouldn't add it to the queue in the first place. And, and so how do we batch the deferred, like the individual deferred fields as they complete? Can, because we can even get away with sending them one at a time here. Um, do we do that? Do we send them one at a time or in, in smaller groups? You know, is that up to the server, however they want? Yeah, I think it's it's really up to the server. Um, you'd, you'd do it, I assume, in a similar way to data loader. You'd effectively wait a tick, see what's ready, and then send that all together. Um, but I'm not sure that we need to specify that too, too tightly. Um, there are some interesting things like if, for example, you do a defer and that has a deep selection set that's all inside of that defer and has maybe like lists and things like that inside of it, that will still, that will still all come through as just like a single payload. Um, it's only when you've got like lots of branching going on through lots of different defers where things get a little bit more interesting, I think. And, and this algorithm, it does require that you're not starting to execute any deferred fields until after the initial selection set is done because you need the values from the initial selection set, right? Yes. The algorithm requires that in terms of specifying it in the spec. Um, you as a server can choose to not do that so long as you still deliver it in the right order, because otherwise you might start delivering things that should not have been delivered because an error occurred at a later stage or whatever. Um, so you would, if you were to start executing that stuff in advance, you'd have to make sure you cached it and then run it through the algorithm later effectively. Um, but yeah, from an algorithmic point of view, excluding any fancy optimizations you might choose to do, we assume that, or we state that you will start executing anything deferred after the non-deferred stuff is complete. But you would still, you would have to do it that way, right? Because you couldn't get to this level and then have like one thread that's executing this independently and another one that's executing this independently because you need to know the values that were, re that were returned by the resolvers in the initial payload before you could start before you could work on any deferred fields, right? Um, they... so, so in my solution, the nested object would be executed once, right? Along with the, the root selection set, the non-deferred selection set. So then when you then have finished that, you go through value completion, at which point you would see the ID and the name selections. So those are what you would then execute next. Now, technically, the, the spec would state that you wouldn't even look at executing name until after everything's been sent, but there's nothing to stop you from starting to execute name. You already know the value of nested objects at that point because it's there in the parent selection set has already been evaluated uh, 
in the in the initial non deferred uh, payload. Effectively, they would yeah. be grouped together by field uh, field collection. And and one one additional thing is that this for sure for sure would only work with a model of patching, meaning it would not work for a client that does not have a cache. Meaning, because payloads are sent partially, and, and then they're notified that you know that it's ready, but you know uh, the client you know couldn't you know we we might be able to add that on, I guess later if that was something that was desirable but it, it would be a little tricky the model is definitely a patch model yes but uh, you don't have to have a cache for it you, you could just keep the you know the uh, json object or whatever and patch onto that right if you wanted to have a very simple thing yeah sorry i didn't i didn't fully understand that i know we've talked about um this like patching and caching and all this stuff before, but I, I don't remember the specifics. Um, but I think all of the incremental delivery stuff is all about delivering stuff later, which is adding stuff to things you already have. Um, yeah. Exactly. So in in that way, this would also be like that. And that should, and should so also. I, I think as long as we keep the the premises that we had before, that everything that we sent down is applicable. Uh, there's no problem. Yeah, and that would be guaranteed by the fact that it comes just out of the value, the standard collection algorithm that we have in GraphQL. And it would also get rid of all of, was it Kwaku's issue? I forget who it was, um, where the, the question was around, like, what happens if, you know, you get the list evaluated and when you evaluate it in one thread, there's four things, and then in the other thread, there's three and they're different things, but you select different fields from each i th do you know what no that would still be an issue or if the list is pulled down twice through um sibling sibling defers or you know uh cousins i guess or something like that some some complicated tree because we don't do that 100 full deduplication um there could be some interesting patching there that might go on. But there shouldn't be deduplication. So if you were requesting an ID on each of those objects, you should see that they don't line up anymore. Yes. Well, you can de get deduplicated from a parent, right? Yeah, I, I think the conclusion here was that if you are deduplicating, you have to you have to guarantee that you're not re-executing the fields and then deduplicating the results from different executions of the same field, right? Yeah, I'm gonna have to write that up as actually because that's that's one I hadn't apparently thought through well enough. Um, and I'd need to think about that. And that actually may well tie into what Yakov was saying before about the the normalized cache, because effectively, if you've got these nested defers and these like branches of nested defers, then there could become a situation, I think, um, where one side of the tree is dealing with a list, you know, ABC, and another side of the tree is dealing with a, le a list XYZ. Um, and then at some point, we need to reconcile those. And I'm not sure exactly how that would ha happen. Yeah, actually, what I was talking about a cache, actually, um, um, uh, I, I was referencing, uh, you know, a comment that I made that, uh, uh, that, you know, I, I think that it, it's, 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 it would be, it would be very interesting to, you know, to enable a situation where a client didn't have to keep a global cache of the entire response. Um, and when I, I, I don't think we need to use cache, we could use the word, you know, you know, uh, you know, pat, patch the original response and just keep that currently available. Like it would be nice if, you know, if different components were interested in different things and some of them could be deferred, 
if we could say that you know they each are you know they each can be supplied um, by you know only the data that they that they require like a simple uh, a simple client might not necessarily need to patch the overall response with that you just need to patch uh, you know, meaning each each uh, deferred payload would supply um, you know the the components so you know right now we're combining them at the same level so it would supply and contain all the data for those deferred components and they would be supplied with them and you know that would be it there wouldn't have to be like a global um, response object it, it's it's uh, there's two blockers for that one is uh, the deduplication uh, itself um, which we have talked about as, as as you know it would be nice to to not uh, you know duplicate data and I think what Matt was talking about was how that could be done sort of on the wire whether it's through gzip or through you know through the transport protocol you know to some extent to deduplicating where where possible but um, uh, but uh, you know it's it's and the other blocker is uh, is uh, you know we're inlining things so in general I think once we have uh, you know you know we have the possibility that things might be inlined and then and once things are inlined you're definitely working with the original response and it becomes difficult to sort everything out so I was hoping that once we got to a uh, um, uh, a response shape that we that we liked, it might be possible to separate the initial response, meaning to to inline not by sticking everything within the original response, but to inline by you know telling client you know sending the data separately, but at the you know in, in the separate tree, but at the same time. Now again, inlining is good for deduplication. So these these things that's like a cross cutting concern is is this use case. Real, you know that I'm talking about really so beneficial, you know, to you know to give up some of these things. But you know, just just uh, you know, there was just something that you know that I was uh, thinking about might be you know better for like even like a naive client um, to to just be able to notify the components and have the components know that all of its data is available with the data that is here right now that it just received. Uh, so you know, again, it brings us sort of sort of further afield. But I'm just pointing out, I guess, that this model. Um, brings us a little further from it. Meaning once we're, once we're extending individual fields, you know, it brings us a little further from that. It's not as a very bad thing, because I don't think that was the direction we were going in to begin with. That's, a, that's an interesting point. Um, so to try and apply that to a concrete use case that I have that I would like in um, incremental delivery to deal with, um, and it is a little bit left field from what we would normally do with GraphQL, um, and that is, for example, building a streamed query over a very large data set like gigabytes. Um, and then for example, having a client that might take, receive that and write it out to a CSV file or something like that. So if we have to have this global object that represents everything about this, uh, this query, then we would have to have enough RAM to store the full result of like multi gigabytes in it. But I don't think that's the case even with what I'm proposing um, because what we effectively are saying, you know, is that there's a, there's deferred things at this path or this path is now complete, et cetera. Um, I think that what you can do is effectively just keep a cache of that object that you're currently uh, dealing with um, or those objects in that list. And yeah, you would be patching those, you'd be adding extra fields into those, maybe into child selections and so on. Um, but once that particular entry in the stream, for example, is complete, then you don't need it anymore. You write it out as a row in your CSV file, and then you can carry on processing the rest of the stream. So I think you can still do that. Um, but I would have to definitely think about it more. Um, I think what you're saying is compared to the situation where we would have no deduplication, whereby if you defer a fragment, when you later receive it, you've received a fragment. This is the entire data I need for this one row in my CSV. I can write it and then I can throw it away. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a bit more work necessary, but I think it's still achievable. So, so just from my understanding, the, the way that on the server, by basically flushing out 
uh, fields without waiting for, I mean, by, by readjusting the specs so that we're able to send fields not that with paths that don't line up exactly with where the defers are, that's how you get around the server having to buffer data of like the shared parent objects because they're flushed out and you just have moved on to executing the the children fields, right? Yeah, from the server side, I think I think that's mm -hmm. correct. Like I can provide counterexample. If you have a query and you put everything on the defer, like on top level, and there is like a slow field, single slow field, the slowest field in the entire query. It means like you need to to store like entire response until you get with like single top level slowest in the query field. Uh, so effectively, uh, I, I agree with Yakov. It's like um, it's. Uh, that's not Is really how? true uh, because you wouldn't be evaluating anything until you've dealt that initial field, right? You'd, you'd evaluate that initial field, then you'd send it, and then you would go and build the other things. So the only thing you're really storing at that point is the selections which come out of passing. The no, no, anyway. no. I mean, like, uh, no, no. I mean, clients. Yakov was speaking about oh, client Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you said about your streams, multi gigabyte streams, like when you wait. Imagine you have the fur on the top level with like all the fields, and one of the fields is like slowest field. So you stuck like with entire response in your cache until like, oh, like pretty big chunk uh, of it. Like there is no like, yeah, so. Basically, if you do top of defer and it's not finished, like quickly, you stuck on it. Um, so I'm like less sure. Uh, but you wouldn't uh, start. On... You wouldn't receive any of the deferred stuff until after the root selection. I still sorry, Ivan. I don't. I don't quite follow what you're saying. It, it sounded like you were saying if you have a, a root level um, defer that has big complex query yeah. in it and also a root level non-deferred slow field no 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 root level like slow field and the defer so like you basically said instead of uh, keeping in memory in client the entire like entire uh, query you can keep only stuff that gets deferred but what if entire query or like the biggest part of the query is deferred and since like the slowest field is like under that top level, it's mean like client need to store entire result until he get like the slowest field. So okay, but the, the, the proposal that I've placed it basically works very much like uh the the current execution algorithm anyway, right? So what would actually happen? is all of those root level fields inside that defer would be executed in parallel and then they would all be sent through. It would be sent through as if it was just one single deferred thing. Like there's, it wouldn't be built up in, in patches. It would just be, if you've got one big complex defer, it would just be evaluated uh -huh. as one big complex defer. Yeah, so, so uh, to clarify, um, like your proposal, because I'm like, I'm maybe I'm confused. So what constraint you breaking? You breaking constraint of sending multiply payload per path. You breaking constraint of uh, changing the path where stuff like delivered or because like half yeah, an hour so ago. Yeah. So if you've if you've got that, I think we've. Uh, I think Rob wrote a query that was like you know. A with a selection in it of B with a selection in it of C, and then another root level defer that had effectively A, B, and then maybe D or something else. So they were very, very similar to each other, um, mm -hmm. except for one like, you know, great grandchild field. The difference 
Uh, thank you, Rob. So the difference would be that in my solution to this, you would get that initial payload, the the F2, A, B, C, D, E, F, H, I, and then you would get another payload, which would be, well, it would just be the J field. It would literally be the J field with a path of F2, C, F, yeah, so you change the path. Uh, yeah. So uh, we keep constraint of one payload per path, but you change the path. Uh, meaning if something is get deferred, you need to store entire thing because you don't know uh, what part of it will be patched. Yes, no, you do. Because when I tell you that something's about to be deferred, I will be telling you that there is a defer at the path F2. CEF. Okay, so it's based on uh, w- when we do like pending, we we not tying path and pending to the path and like query, right? So basically, uh, when you write when you write your fragment and you have deferred it or like you will defer entire fragment, whatever, and with bunch of fragments meshed client cannot trust that like he had like a defer on, on top level in this example but he will get like in pending or something he will get id with uh, with different path no yeah you were right originally actually thinking about it the um the path for this defer would have been the root selection set because that's where it, where it is so yes you would have to cache that entire object in order to to patch it yeah so path would stay the same right uh root level uh, the, and the you deferred have... path would stay the same yes but the pale the patch would have the longer path in it and the shorter payload if you see what i mean so uh-huh. um for this for this example um you're basically going to be sending uh, you're going to send first the uh, initial payload with with these fields. You're going to say that there's a pending with a path at the root. Yeah. Then you're going to send a data with just J with a path of F2CF. Yes. Then there's going to be a third payload that says completed. the path at the root is completed. Yes. Yeah. So... I, I have a question. What if we have next to C, we will have like C2 scholar? Not sub in, in the defer. Uh, yeah, yeah, in the defer. So what, we, yeah. what so if just, we have like... Just as Rob describes um, just then, uh, but imagine after you get that J, you also get another patch that comes through with a C2 at path F2, and then you get that the route is completed. Okay, so... And basically, since and if I copy paste with with defer, uh, and we'll do and and we'll make like and we'll shift defer under like make a copy of of like defer part and shift defer one level inside. So I will wrap. C into like defer. Yeah. So uh, I will basically get J twice with the path of J. So the so you're saying that the CFJ would be inside of another defer, inside of the current defer, effectively? Uh, no, not on the current. Just like uh, uh, we have like uh, line uh, this line that Rob selected. Uh, yeah. Rob, can you select the entire defer thing? Yeah, we will copy paste that uh, yeah. lower, okay. and in this copy paste we shift defer into. Uh, F2 to, to wrap like C. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, and move, yeah, F2 like outside. 
Yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, does that mean we will have two J, uh, two instances of J, which is okay because we're not fully duplicating, but yes. we will have two instances of J with the path of J. So we also break and constrain of uh, multiply payloads per path. Yes, that's correct. Yes, you will get J twice. Yeah, uh, it's not a problem with J twice because yeah, what what's new I learned is that we will have multiply payload for the same path. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. With, with, Which is okay with, because we track explicitly whether a path is completed rather than implicitly by saying when we send you data for that path, it is then complete. Rather than doing that, we're explicit. Okay. So based on like our initially, we have like a free solution, free constraint, and every solution broke one constraint. Uh, Yakov proposed like another one and we switch to quadrant here is uh, basically you we think outer two things uh think get uh, actually like free kind of path is unpredictable like client can calculate path but like more complicated using complicated algorithms so it's it, not it's statically I, com, it's statically predictable statically predictable but not it's not the same as like uh, deferred that it was written on so it's different path like path of payload and path of defer so it's yeah. like two, two new entities mm -hmm. um we will have like a cup uh, uh, one defer can be split in multiply payloads. Yeah. It's the second constraint uh, that change, like, and third constraint the change is that uh, we will have multiply payloads with the same path. But yeah, now I get starting to get understand because it's new idea of like um, deferred path and payload path. So. Yes. So basically, we will have like instead of payloads, we need to say like patches. It will make more sense. So, so we have like we will have multiple patches on the same. Yeah, for Good clients point. to keep track of it, I think like in reality, clients will just have like one JSON object and we will just patch it because otherwise, it's like it's too much hassle to to maintain and you will have like more data dupl uh, duplication on the client because like yeah um one thing because yakov shared what he working on i also want to share what i'm working on um like uh, nothing to show yet one thing i figure out uh, and the direction i'm looking into is like can we statically rewrite query? Uh, meaning, like, no execution is changed. Uh, nothing is like, but just like, uh, basically, uh, do margin algorithm and uh, forget about like parallelization, just match everything into one response. And if people want parallelization, uh, stuff executed independently they will use aliases uh, so focus on like um, have execution like basically algorithm effectively algorithm to rewrite one query into normal form of a query mm -hmm. uh, basically do do collect uh, affect only collect fields uh and uh, so all the stuff zero so effectively like currently basically fields get matched uh, i i trying to find like a set of simple rules that allow like uh, to match stuff inside outside if you're in all the combination and um, and uh, make it predictable and static 
And if people want to say like some something is independent, they need to use like aliases or labels or some other mechanism as we discuss later. Because uh, similar to to I think it's a similar thing to inlining. When we start, when we agreed that we need to inline into initial response to prevent denial of service attack, we basically said clients need to do patching, uh, to do like patch initial response because stuff can get matched or delivered separately. So price is already paid. Uh, in the same uh, in the same manner, uh, if we say uh, that on on the same level, people cannot have like defer executed independently, and they need to do alias on the same level. Uh, price is already paid. We need to add mechanism to do that. So why not create a rule that squash everything into one query with like stuff get deferred, not independently, but subsequently deferred. Uh, and if if people want parallelization, they need to do aliases. And I think uh, it, it's direction I, I want to explore, just wanted to, to announce it. Hopefully I will have proposal written. Uh, this week, at least in text. Yeah, um, we're we're at time. Uh, yeah, I I mean I think that it's good to like keep going through all these different ideas and make sure that we've uh, that we're confident in, in whichever direction we go in. Um. So, so I would like to see some examples of what you're thinking, Yvonne, and yeah, some more I, examples for yeah. for uh, for Benji's proposal. Basically, it's like um, uh, last time on a working group, main working group, we discussed it, and uh, uh, Liz's reaction was like. Uh, Problems is real. Solution have like trade offs. Let's explore possible solutions. So it's what we're doing right now. So I think everything is good. One thing, maybe at some point, uh, we need to have like a document like trade off or constraints that we break and, and like some of these ideas to because we already start branching up like ideas branching up of ideas and uh, it for us it's kind of makes sense but for people outside of this group it's like it's like too big a jump to understand what we're discussing currently uh, yeah i yeah that's that's a good point um i can work on that this week try to have a high level. These were each of the proposals and each one of them is like changing a different constraint and there, these are the trade-offs. Yeah, that makes sense. Or, or introduce new concept like Benjamin's right, proposal exactly. introduce new concept like um, deferred declaration path and path of the patch. I think the main thing that I need to think about, um, obviously, I, the what I've written needs work anyway. Um, but the main thing that came out of this uh, that I hadn't anticipated well enough was the lists uh, in like deeply nested defers and whether those are reconcilable, whether that is going to be a kind of a blocker problem. Um, so I need to think about that a bit more. Um, but yeah, it's been a good discussion. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you. See you all Bye. next week. Bye.